Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 13 of our Selenium with C Sharp video series. And in this video, we will be talking about parallel testing with Selenium C Sharp using NUnit 3. And before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 4 since in part 4 we were discussing about NUnit a lot. So I would say that before watching this part, if you refresh yourself with NUnit or if you have good idea on NUnit, then this video should be very good video for you. Alright, so let's get started. This is one of the most requested topic by many of the subscribers and viewers of Exit Automation channel. Hence, this video is for you guys. Parallel Test Execution with NUnit The NUnit test engine is able to offer a certain degree of parallelization by running the test in an test assembly in a different process. So the NUnit 3.0 framework can run test in parallel within an assembly or in a multiple assembly. The tests that are eligible to run in parallel with other tests must be identified using the parallelizable attribute. So if you want to run a test in parallel, you don't really have to do a lot of things. Earlier there was something called as PN unit, which is nothing but parallel N unit, which was kind of very cumbersome to configure and run the test. But using the parallelizable attribute, you can decorate your class with parallelizable and then you can run the test from there and it will just execute as expected. So this is very, very, very simple than compared to the PN unit or any other parallel test execution framework that you use. So we are going to discuss about this easy stuff in this particular video. So how is that being achieved? The framework creates worker thread for running test. The default number of thread is equal to the number of processors or two, whichever is greater. So if you have a processor with two or three cores, then that particular cores are being executed by the N unit but the default is 2 and whichever is greater will be taken. So the user can control the number of threads by using the assembly level level of parallelism attribute or worker options on the command line. So the command line options takes precedence if specified. So you can use any of these options. But you know what we are not going to really discuss about the command line option in this video but you can do that as well. So if you set the hyphen hyphen workers option in the command line while executing the n unit test then you can run the test with that level of worker thread for your test. So what are we going to do with this n unit parallelism then? We are going to execute the test which is written on selenium with c sharp and we'll be using the n unit framework to spawn the test for multiple browsers like chrome, ie and firefox. So we will be writing three tests, three different classes and we'll be executing the same test in multiple browsers same time parallelly. That's what we're going to do in this video. So a word of caution before we get started. Do not use the static keyword for your web driver instance if you're using so. Do not use any static property in your code which is used across your framework or code which you are going to write because that is going to put you in problem or sometimes if you use a static keyword your reference for that particular object will be inclined toward a test which is being executed parallelly in some other browser and there will be some kind of problem so don't use static keywords. Alright so let's see this in action and see how things works. So for that I'm going to flip to Visual Studio. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to open the Visual Studio 2015 in my machine and I'm using Visual Studio 2015 Enterprise version and then I'm going to create a new project. So this time I'm going to create a project which is going to be a normal test project for my unit test uh, code. So it is going to be a Selenium parallel test and then I'm going to hit OK. So this project is going to be a very very simple test project and we need different kinds of package as we have already discussed in our previous videos. We require the package like Selenium and NUnit and browsers like Chrome, Internet Explorer. So what I'm going to do, let me quickly install the Selenium first. So this is the Selenium web driver. So I'm going to install the Selenium web driver and then we require NUnit. So I'm going to search for NUnit and then I'm going to install the NUnit as well. So as you can see, I'm installing version 3.4.1. So this is the latest version as of now while I'm releasing this video. And then I'm going to work with Chrome driver. So I'm going to download the Chrome driver as well. So now we have three NUnit packages installed or referenced for our project. So let's quickly see how things are looking. So NUnit, web driver, and we have the Chrome driver as well in the bin folder. So everything looks good right now. 
So what I'm going to do next is instead of using the Microsoft Visual Studio dot testing tool dot unit test, I am going to use the n unit this time. So n unit framework. That's what we're going to use. And instead of this test class, we have something called a test fixture as we have already discussed in part four of this particular series. So I'm going to use that and the method names are going to be test, right? So I'm going to use test and here let's call this in a different way. Let's say uh, for the public class unit test one, I'm going to say Firefox testing, something like that. And then here let's call this as Firefox Google test and then Let's create a same kind of class right here and let's call this as Chrome testing and let's call this as Chrome Google test. So now we have two different classes within one namespace and now what I'm going to do I'm going to create a base class which is going to be having the references for our web drivers. So let's quickly create a class here and this class is going to be act like a base class so I'm gonna name it as base and within this particular class I'm going to add a property something like I web driver so this is where your instance of the web driver is gonna sit so I web driver and let's call this as driver right so I'm gonna remove the unnecessary usings here there we go. So any test or any classes which is going to use this particular web driver should inherit the base class, right? So I have created this particular base class right here. And the last thing which I'm going to create, as we know in our NUnit, we have something called as fixtures or otherwise called as hooks, where you can create different types of attributes like setup, teardown. So I'm just going to add that right here. So let's call this as hooks and within this hooks I'm going to add the constructor. So this constructor is going to be initializing the browser for now. So as of now I'm going to initialize only Firefox. So in order to initialize the Firefox remember we should use only one common driver object here for the whole framework. So since we are going to use this particular web driver, we should be inheriting the base class, right? So if I inherit the base class, then I can just do like this driver is equal to new. And then I'm going to call something called as Firefox driver. So this is going to create a new Firefox driver for us. So as you can see, my video is very, very fast. I'm not even explaining why I'm doing all these things because we have already discussed about this a lot in our other videos. That's why I'm going so fast in this particular video. Please go ahead and watch the previous videos for a clear understanding of what we are doing in this video. All we are doing is this within this unit test.cs, we are actually creating two different classes with a method in it. And then we are creating a base class so that I use only one object for the web driver in my whole framework or the whole code. And then I'm creating a hook.cs class where I'm going to initialize the driver object so that I can use it. So since we have initialized these hooks right here, we also need to inherit this particular hooks class in our unit test1.cs. It's not confusing, right? It's very, very easy. All you have to do is you are creating a contract that if you're going to execute a testing class, then you should inherit from the hooks class. So hooks it is and also in here. So we have created everything as a setup for now. The last thing which we need to do is to actually write the test for our Google search. So I'm going to write a very, very simple Google search here, something like driver dot find element. Oops. First of all, we need to navigate to that particular website, right? So driver dot navigate dot go to URL of HTTP colon double slash www dot Google dot com. So this is going to navigate me to that particular website. And then we have to search in the text box. So driver dot find element by dot, I guess it's name 
so by is a class which we need to import the namespace by dot name of I guess it is Q since we are doing this for a long time I remember the name by the way and send keys of let's say I'm gonna search for something called a selenium so that's what it is so I'm searching for selenium and then I need to click the search button so driver dot find element by dot name and here I'm gonna give the name of the search button as btng I know that the search button name is btng so I'm just gonna click that particular button so once it is clicked I need to assert something so I'm gonna assert that the driver dot page source dot contains selenium in it is equal to true if not text selenium does not exist so I'm using a different kind of stuff here like assert that is equal to so this is like a fluent way of writing the code in any unit assertion instead of using the assert is true is false this is kind of more readable right like kind of little bit of BDD kind of stuff so I'm just gonna use that so this is for navigating to the Google website and performing some kind of operation there just gonna copy the same code again and paste it right here so instead of uh, selenium let's say I'm gonna search for execute automation and then I'm gonna check if the text execute automation exist there or not in the page source right so everything is cool right now all we have to do is just build the project and see if our test appears right here there we go now we have our Google test and Firefox test so let me quickly run this test and see how things work so I'm gonna select both of these tests and then I'm going to run the selected test let's see what's gonna happen hopefully it should open the browser hmm nothing is happening I guess this is a problem with the Firefox latest version the current version I have is 48.0 but there was a problem with the Selenium web driver and Firefox the latest version of Firefox so what if I search in the Google and see what is going to really happen so Firefox I guess the problem was fixed in 47.01 but in 48 again the problem appeared so if I go right here there we go there is a release note and if I come down right here you can see that there is a fix like Selenium web driver may cause Firefox to crash and start up so this was fixed in this particular release but again in 48.0 they break that particular thing so bad about Firefox so let me quickly go to the all downloads and let me download the 47.01 version in my machine so that I don't really end up with crashing my Firefox to perform these operation so let's search for English and here is the version I don't know which version it's going to download so let me quickly download the version for my windows okay so this is downloading the 48 version so there is a listing here for 47.01 so I'm going to download oops not the SDK so ENUS so we have the Firefox setup for 47.01 in this particular URL so I'm just going to download this so once it is downloaded and installed I'll be back now we have installed our 47.0.1 Firefox version before you click this about Firefox make sure that you go to the option advanced and in updates uncheck this use a background service to install the update because if you open the about Firefox it will automatically download the latest version of Firefox in your machine so ensure that you uncheck this and also hit this never check for update for now because currently whatever browser is being released is not being supported so hit this never check for the update and then let's go to the about Firefox right now you can see that we have 47.0.1 this browser build has got the latest fix for the web driver so now our test should run fine without any problem so what I'm going to do I'm just going to run this test but before doing that I forgot one thing in the hooks within this hooks we should also decorate this to test fixture because while we do this 
in our future code we are going to ensure that we will set different kinds of browser for running the test so we will come back to this in our next video but for now just ensure that you also decorate this particular class with test fixture attribute right so let me quickly go to the tests and now I'm going to run this test and see how things are gonna work so it should open the browser this time and also should navigate to the Google website there we go so it's going to the browser it's typing for searching for exit automation it's again opening a new browser searching for selenium so everything seems to be working fine so in our next video we will be actually making this test to be running in parallel so that's it guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day